We are up to Lesson 137 in the Workbook of A Course in Miracles. Lesson 137. When I am healed, I am not healed alone. When I am healed, I am not healed alone. Today's idea remains the central thought on which salvation rests. For healing is the opposite of all the world's ideas, which dwell on sickness and on separate states. Sickness is a retreat from others and a shutting off of joining. It becomes a door that closes on a separate self and keeps it isolated and alone. Sickness is isolation, for it seems to keep oneself apart from all the rest to suffer what the others do not feel. It gives the body final power to make the separation real and keep the mind in solitary prison, split apart and held in pieces by a solid wall of sickened flesh which it cannot surmount. The world obeys the laws that sickness serves, but healing operates apart from them. It is impossible that anyone be healed alone. In sickness must he be apart and separate, but healing is his own decision to be one again and to accept his self with all its parts intact and unassailed. In sickness does his self appear to be dismembered and without the unity that gives it life. But healing is accomplished as he sees the body has no power to attack the universal oneness of God's Son. Sickness would prove that lies must be the truth, but healing demonstrates that truth is true. The separation sickness would impose has never really happened. To be healed is merely to accept what always was the simple truth and always will remain exactly as it has forever been. Yet eyes accustomed to illusions must be shown that what they look upon is false. So healing, never needed by the truth, must demonstrate that sickness is not real. Healing might thus be called a counter dream which cancels out the dream of sickness in the name of truth, but not in truth itself. Just as forgiveness overlooks all sins that never were accomplished, healing but removes illusions that have not occurred. Just as the real world will arise to take the place of what has never been at all, healing but offers restitution for imagined states and false ideas which dreams embroider into pictures of the truth. Yet think not healing is unworthy of your function here, for Antichrist becomes more powerful than Christ to those who dream the world is real. The body seems to be more solid and more stable than the mind, and love becomes a dream, while fear remains the one reality that can be seen and justified and fully understood. Just as forgiveness shines away all sin and the real world will occupy the place of what you made, so healing must replace the fantasies of sickness which you hold before the simple truth. When sickness has been seen to disappear, in spite of all the laws that hold it, cannot but be real, then questions have been answered and the laws can no longer cherished nor no 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 when sickness has been seen to disappear in spite of all the laws that hold it cannot but be real then questions have been answered and the laws can be no longer cherished nor obeyed healing is freedom for it demonstrates that dreams will not prevail against the truth healing is shared and by this attribute, it proves that laws unlike the ones which hold that sickness is inevitable are more potent than their sickly opposites. Healing is strength, for by its gentle hand is weakness overcome, 
and minds that were walled off within a body, free to join with other minds, to be forever strong. Healing, forgiveness, and the glad exchange of all the world of sorrow for a world where sadness cannot enter are the means by which the Holy Spirit urges you to follow Him. His gentle lessons teach how easily salvation can be yours. How little practice you need undertake to let His laws replace the ones you made to hold yourself a prisoner to death. His life becomes your own as you extend the little help He asks in freeing you from everything that ever caused you pain. And as you let yourself be healed, you see all those around you, or who cross your mind, or whom you touch, or those who seem to have no contact with you, healed along with you. Perhaps you will not recognize them all, nor realize how great you're offering to all the world when you let healing come to you. But you are never healed alone. And legions upon legions will receive the gift that you receive when you are healed. Those who are healed become instruments of healing. Nor does time elapse between the instant they are healed and all the grace of healing it is given them to give. What is opposed to God does not exist. And who accepts it not within his mind becomes a haven where the weary can remain to rest. For here is truth bestowed, and here are all illusions brought to truth. Would you not offer shelter to God's will? You but invite yourself to be at home. And can this invitation be refused? Ask the inevitable to occur, and you will never fail. The other choice is but to ask what cannot be to be, and this cannot succeed. Today we ask that only truth will occupy our minds, that thoughts of healing will this day go forth from what is healed to what must yet be healed, aware that they will both occur as one. We will remember as the hour strikes, our function is to let our minds be healed that we may carry healing to the world, exchanging curse for blessing, pain for joy, and separation for the peace of God. Is not a minute of the hour worth the giving to receive a gift like this? Is not a little time a small expense to offer for the gift of everything? Yet, must we be prepared for such a gift? And so we will begin the day with this, and give ten minutes to these thoughts with which we will conclude today at night as well. When I am healed, I am not healed alone. And I would share my healing with the world, that sickness may be banished from the mind of God's one Son, who is my only self. Let healing be through you this very day. And as you rest in quiet, be prepared to give as you receive, to hold but what you give, and to receive the word of God to take the place of all the foolish thoughts that ever were imagined. Now we come together to make well all that was sick and offer blessing where there was attack nor will we let this function be forgot as every hour of the day slips by remembering our purpose with this one thought when i am healed i am not healed alone and i would bless my brothers for i would be healed with them as they are healed with me that's lesson 137 when I am healed, I am not healed alone. If you would like to read my commentary on the workbook this year, 
go to amytorresason.com and click on Amy's blog. Namaste.